What's up, everyone? Today, we're looking at the new Webflow app gen experience. And I know you've been waiting for this because it's been getting a lot of attention ever since we announced it at Webflow Conf. This is a new way to build real production-grade web apps inside of Webflow. And it's powered by the Webflow AI Assistant. So if you want to go beyond static pages and build something interactive, like a directory, a portal, or a tool that responds to your users, then this is for you. Now, here's the idea. You describe what you want to build in plain English, and the AI Assistant writes all of the code for you. Since you can include specific components and CMS collections when submitting your prompt, and it automatically pulls in your website's design system, such as your variables, then that means that everything it generates is already aligned with your brand and seamlessly connected to your content. Webflow deploys the app for you on Webflow Cloud with a single click. No separate setup, no extra tools, it's hosted right alongside your site. So let's walk through a quick example of how it works. OK, so we've got this brand, Winter Cabins. And what they do is that they have vacation rentals for people to book all across the US and Canada. And we built this with the AI Site Builder. So we have a good landing page going on here. But I want to offer our users a way to actually search the cabins with a directory tool. So let's go ahead and click on App Gen up here. And once that loads, we see I get this prompt box down here. What would you like to create? Now, I've already prepared my prompt. I want to build a map that lets users see all of the cabins from my cabin collection. I want to enable them to filter through these cabins. And I want to show a list of the cabins next to a map. So we're telling it to use imagery. And uh, when a user clicks on a cabin from the list, we want to try to open a modal. So let's go ahead and include from our collections here the cabins collection. And I also want to include the navigation component. So we see those are attached to our prompt context right up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and press Enter. And I think while that's spinning, what I'm going to do is go ahead and check out a book from the Webflow Studio library here and do some light reading. JavaScript, the definitive guide. Oh, and there we go. We see we have explore cabins. We have filter cabins. Um, we have a big map here. I'm going to zoom in and out. And uh, I know some of these cabins already. And I know that they're kind of showing up in the right place. Most of our cabins are in the US. We do have some in Canada. And it found 15 cabins, which is how many we have. And this is a scrollable container that we have here. And I'm wondering what happens when I click this. It looks like something happened on the map. So this one is, is larger and darker. So it looks like when I click on the listings here, we're getting the correct cabins. I'm going to click the dot here. And that Cascade Mountain, that is matching up with the clicked one here. So we're seeing some active states and some little uh, pop-up modals that are going on here. And what happens when I click on the map? Um, I would love for when I click on the map for that to update down in the listing. And it, it looks like I do get an active, um, an active border here. Obviously, it's cut off a little bit. But I think it would be cool if we could maybe scroll that into view when I click it. So let's go ahead and ask the AI to do that for us. Uh, when I click a dot on the map, be sure to scroll the active listing into view. All right, so while it's thinking, I'm going to go ahead and have a snack. Wow, it's done. So that wasn't long at all. I only got one Cheeto. Let's see if that worked. I click there, and it scrolls. I'm seeing the active one. So this is already improved on where we started from. And I can notice a lot of other improvements I would like to make, definitely some styling issues. Um, and I think I might be able to do those better myself. So I can actually explore the code in here. And we could go and check out something uh, like our cabins list here. And for that, I'll just pop over to code here. And down in here is where I can modify all of the CSS if I wanted to do that. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, though. The other thing I think that is cool to look at, if we go back into preview, there's this little arrow. I can open this in a new tab and go ahead and browse this as though it were already a live website. And the last thing I can do is I can go ahead and deploy this. So up at the top right here, we have this Deploy button. I go ahead and hit Deploy. And remember, that's deploying to Webflow Cloud. So it's all integrated. I don't have to do any extra setup. The one thing I do want to note is what is the actual slug of that URL. So it looks like this is going to be deployed to slash cabin finder. I see on the top right, it's spinning. It's got deploy. And I can watch what's going on in the deployment tab here. There's a lot. It looks like it's using Vite. 
to, um, to build our Astro app for us. That's what it's using under the hood. We see TypeScript, we see React, a Tailwind, all things that we like to work with as developers. Oh, here we go. So it says app deployed. I'm gonna click this go to app button. And here we go. We have our map view over here and go ahead and toggle on that and click. And when I click the dot, it actually zooms down here to the listings part. Let's say I want to view details on this. I'll go ahead and click view details and we can see that it's updated to the slash cabin slash bear den bungalow uh, slug up at the top there. So very cool. It's already creating routes in our Astro app for us. And we see we've got kind of a gallery view of different photos of these cabins. It has the description there, some amenities obviously things that I want to follow on with prompting for the app gen tool. So uh, the location should definitely be showing a map here. I would love to improve that. And I think this might look better left aligned. Obviously there's some styling updates that I wanna make before I send this to my customers, but we saw how easy it was with the AI app gen experience to prompt this thing into production in just a few minutes. Since launching the beta, we've already seen some really cool examples of app gen, including this surf school website, which has an interactive calendar. I can click on here to filter through our classes. There's nothing on November 7th, but I am free this Saturday on November 8th. There's a kid's surf camp. Let's see, I think I need something. Uh, sunset beginner session. This sounds about my speed. Uh, and this is pulling from our CMS. If I just go ahead and click into our CMS, we see we have classes here and we can see all the class dates. So this is very cool that AppGen is just pulling those for us and creating this interactive calendar experience. Another tool that we have is this Flow Foods recipe browser. So I can browse by cuisine type, say I click over to Asian, there's a pho recipe, I could click into that and that will take me to our pho recipe. There it is. Uh, and I wanna go back. Wow, look, it even has routes here um, that we're seeing. So slash recipes slash Vietnamese pho. We have all our servings here, our calories, again, pulling from our recipes CMS. Some styling updates to make, but that is okay. Okay, so we're back in our recipe browser. We can see these also have filter by difficulties, by dietary tag. So lots of cool filtering logic that we can do and use AppGen to create that experience for our customers. Now, all of these are fully on brand, hosted on Webflow Cloud and built entirely inside of Webflow. So that is your first look at Webflow AppGen, the new way to build full stack apps without ever leaving Webflow. If you wanna try it yourself, head on over to webflow.com slash code dash gen to start building today. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see what you all start building.